we're going to a very distant land with Finn and Jake and Marceline and Princess Bubblegum. It's adventure time. Greetings, fellow vampire hunters, and welcome back to Ramblings, an unrepented geeking podcast. As always, I am your host, Sean Kronenfeld, but no time today for the usual preamble, so let's just get right to it and take a look at part two and th- part three and four of Stakes, Vamps About and the Empress Eyes. So, beginning with part three, wow, I'm kind of impressed that this, when you consider just how much this one 12, 11-minute episode has to accomplish and how good of a job it does. By the end of the episode, we've established the formula for the remainder of the series, we've concluded the flashback that began in episode 2, we've established the personalities for our new villains, and we've also left room for some humorous, uh, let's say, shenanigans. A lot to do and not a lot of time, but it pulls it off well. Vamps About indeed does give us a very strong, I think the biggest part of it is establishing the personalities of the various characters, and I gotta say, I think the MVP so far of this entire thing has to be at least in terms of voice acting, none other than Billy Brown as the Vampire King, who's just... I, I, I could listen to that voice, seriously, I could listen to that voice all day long. I, I, I really, I really could. And it, it's impressive. He does a really good job of bringing a sense of menace to the Vampire King without making him just yet another cliche Saturday morning cartoon villain. There's a bit of gravitas there, but there's also a bit of strangeness. Oddness. It's a very good fit for Adventure Time, in other words. And I, I can't wait for the final showdown between him and Marceline. So he tells me it's going to be pretty traumatic by the time all is said and done. Before then, however, we do have, you know, a few episodes to go. So let's finish talking about those. Yeah, overall, I I really enjoyed part three of Stakes. I think it did an excellent job of, well, establishing the stakes. Of setting up what is to come throughout the remainder of the series. While still being an entertaining episode in its own right. I think that our new vampire villains are an enjoyable set of baddies. And again, I'm impressed with how such a minimum of screen time each is given a distinct and interesting personality. I mean, except arguably for, you know, the the, the moon who, who doesn't really talk or say much. But even then, they managed to give him at least a little bit of personality, the way he interacts with the fool and establishing his healing powers. We already got to see the Hierophant, who's voiced, who is voiced by a favorite songwriter of mine, Paul Williams. That is the same Paul Williams who did a lot of things with the Muppet Shows. And over the years, he helped write a lot of the Muppet Show songs. He was also the singer on, you know, performer on the Daft Punk track, Touch, from the album um, Random Access Memories. Probably my favorite song on one of my favorite albums. So, yeah, I was really thrilled to get to have Paul Williams, and I can't wait for next episode when it seems likely we're going to be getting more with him. Regardless, this was a very strong episode, and, yeah, let's move on to Part 4, The Empress Eyes. As you would expect from that title, this episode, Part 4 of Stakes, focuses on The Empress who is a villainess with a particular history with Marceline. I mean, it's clear she's after all the vampires, and this episode establishes very clearly why. But it's a bit more personal between these two, not least of which because she also has a history with the Ice King, a.k.a. Simon. And I think one of the more interesting touches with this episode is the way the Empress seemingly gets Simon under her control and reverts him back to a more explicitly villainous character. I mean, when you think about it, it's been a while since the Ice King, you know, remember back to the early days of the show when, you know, the Ice King was very much the main villain, as it were. Certainly in the days before the introduction of the Lich and like. I mean, he was always a comedic figure as much as he was a villainous one, but we didn't really feel much sympathy for him. He was just this weird, crazy, nasty old guy. 
and then we found out about his past, and then we found out even more about his past, and everything changed. But it is kind of fun to see the Ice King go back to a, just a more straight-on antagonistic character for a little while. I love the little bit with him in the trees, just, you know, snap, snap. It actually manages to be a tiny bit, I don't know, not intimidating, a tiny bit, you know, it actually makes him seem almost a little bit dangerous for a minute there, but of course, he's the Ice King, and in the end, his his true colors shine through. I, again, not the main focus of this episode, this is, or this series, it's definitely, this is Marceline series, but I did, I love the little touch of Finn, the way Finn deals with the Ice King by the end of the episode, and leads him away and now refers to him by Simon too. It, it's it's just a nice reminder of how the relationships between these characters have grown and changed over the course of the seven seasons of this show. Regardless, getting back to the main villain, she is uh, the Empress, voiced by Rebecca Romaine, and she does a great job. She does a, a terrific job of giving her, you know, that seductive... Tw- that seductive edge that the character clearly relies on, while also still making her seem like a dangerous opponent. I love the design for her, the the way the snake comes up and unmasks her eyes. It's just a really strong design overall, and she makes for a memorable encounter in this episode. I, I know some people, I've already heard some people complaining, you know, at the idea that, well, we're basically just getting a Mega Man plot, and... Yeah, okay, there is a little bit of truth to that, but then Adventure Time has always worn its video game inspirations on its sleeve. It's never been exactly, you know, it's never shied away from them, and it's used video game tropes as major plot elements to great effect in the past. And while, yes, arguably, we are for a bit more formulaic things for the rest of this, there's no reason that that can't still be enjoyable. The key is to keep the focus on the characters, and I don't think anybody can argue this episode fails to do that. I I mean, we get to see Marceline's first vampire kill, we get to establish why she does this, and as so much of what apparently goes on with this character's life, it comes down to her relationship with Simon. That she saw somebody, that in the years following his separation from her, which we saw in flashback in part two, she sees somebody who at first she thinks is him but realizes it's just a normal human and it really helps establish what she was doing and why she was protecting the the remaining humans who yeah by the way it seems pretty clear are will eventually go on to become the humans of susan strong's tribe but yeah that's just a little bit of trivia that i assume we all picked up on with them on the boat and talking about sailing away regardless the fight between Marceline Finn and the Empress is a good one. It makes good use of her invisibility. It's interesting to watch. And of course, throwing in Simon as the wild card is effective. I love the reveal. I suspected it. I saw it coming all along. But, okay, I still love the reveal of him not actually being hypnotized by her. It is both funny and incredibly sad that, as she says, he's so far gone, she can't even influence his mind. And the the way she plays off the guilt of Marceline Fields for letting him become like this is, well, I mean, it ends up being a mistake on her end, I think you could argue. But, boy, does it is it clear how much it affects Marceline. And I love, you know, Bubblegum's last-minute save in typical Bubblegum fashion. Now, I'm excited to see where we go from here. Yes, it's a Mega Man for- formula, but hey, the Mega Man formula works, as somebody should freaking tell Capcom. No, 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 this is not the time or place for that particular mountain of bitterness. Someday. Someday. Okay, so, I thought The Empress was a good episode. I mean, you know, it, it's probably the most standalone of this miniseries so far. You could arguably just watch it on its own, and it still makes a fairly satisfying story. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'll be curious to see if we see more of the Ice King before this is all said and done. I could see him being pretty much, you know, out of the story now, but I could also see him coming in and playing a role before all is said and done. I suppose we shall see. Overall, with day two of Stakes, I remain very entertained by the first Adventure Time miniseries. I think they're doing a great job of using it 
to tell you know to layer in more backstory for this series while still presenting a present day adventure that is filled with adventure you know appropriately enough action and comedy i i i, I do this i love the whole little bit in um the emperor's eyes with jake and princess bubblegum's outside clock i mean it's just completely non sequitur a bit of nonsense in classic adventure type fashion and I love the the idea that as, as as freaked out and scared of vampires that Jake is, he's actually more afraid, if only slightly, of Princess Bubblegum finding out that he broke his clock, that he broke her clock. And hey, I, I can't blame him. I mean, the vampires are only ancient monstrosities of blood sucking fiends with incredible powers. Princess Bubblegum is Princess Bubblegum. You don't mess with her. She's hardcore, man. She's hardcore. So yeah, I love that little bit of, uh, the 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 point where where he gets Finn to fist bump him, and you can tell Finn's just going along with this because he's like, "What the hell, man?" Oh, uh, that left me laughing for a good you know ten twenty seconds. I actually had to pause it for a second. I don't know. It, it hit me in the right mood, I I suppose. And the whole peppermint butler having all these weapons and Marcelina agreeing, "No, no, I could snap at any moment and kill you all." Oh, that is the adventure time I have long known and loved. So, yeah, Stakes continues to be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to the next two parts. May I come in, where it appears we will be dealing with the Herophant, and take her back, where where Marceline, Finn, and Jake will have to face the moon. So, that is the next two parts of Adventure Time Stakes, and I will see you back here tomorrow for my thoughts on on those episodes. In the meantime, if you want to check out other stuff from me, including my recent review of the new 3DS game Stella Glow, you can head on over to unrepentedgeeking.com. And if you want to support the show, please drop on by uh, patreon.com slash unrepentedgeeking. Even just a couple dollars a month can be a big help to keeping this show around. Finally, if you're watching this on iTunes, please, please, please rate and review that really does matter in helping spread the word about the show it's something that only takes you a couple minutes but it's a huge help to me and to unrepented geeking and ramblings so please consider doing it i really do appreciate it until next time then for unrepented geeking and ramblings i'm sean crotterfeld wishing you all long days and pleasant nights <laughs>